welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 greatest Top of the Pops performances of all time. She's a killer, queen, got body to the teeth. With a laser Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be ranking the most memorable, enduring, or otherwise awesome performances from Top of the Pops. What's your favorite Top of the Pops memory? Let us know in those comments below. Number 20, Mud. Yeah. The artificiality of Top of the Pops makes it easy for artists to take the piss. The glam rock group Mud took a different approach back in 1974, however, and had a little bit of fun at the same time. Your tiger feet. Your tiger feet. Your tiger feet. Mud invited their roadies on stage to devise a dance number alongside the band's performance of Tiger Feet. Top of the Pops was well known for having dancers showcased while a band was playing, and perhaps Mud was poking fun at the show's penchant for miniskirt wearing go go girls with the show. The sight of Mud and their roadies dancing and bopping along to the group's hit single never fails to make us smile. Number 19, Hawkwind. The dynamic and far out sound of Hawkwind wasn't exactly tailor made for the top of the pop stage. However, their psychedelic warriors nevertheless had a charting single with their hit, Silver Machine, and were invited on the program. However, the band decided to eschew convention and have their performance broadcast from a live show in Dunstable. The actual audio was from the single version, but the video performance showcased Hawkwind in all of its surreal and atmospheric glory. The heavy riffs and hypnotic percussion of Silver Machine is amplified by future motorhead man Lemmy on lead vocals, as well as Stacia's interpretive dancing and bubbles. Far out, man. Number 18, Jethro Tull. One of the great things about Top of the Pops was how it genuinely reflected the occasionally quirky state of British musical charts. How else could we explain the presence of folky progressive rock heroes Jethro Tull appearing on the program? He's calling red, yellow, brown, all over the The band's performance of The Witch's Promise was very much indicative of Toll's earlier jazzier roots, combined with their aforementioned folk influence. Frontman Ian Anderson looks like a man possessed as he mimes along to the track, a feeling that's doubly expressed as the clips turn freaky around the two minute mark. <laughs> The psychedelic lighting just adds to the strange atmosphere of the Top of the Pops audience dancing around to such artful and commercially reticent progressive rock. Number 17, Cameo. Sometimes it's not so much about the performance on Top of the Pops, but what the group is wearing. This idea definitely applies to American funk group Cameo, whose lead singer devised a definite talking point with his wardrobe choice. Lead vocalist Larry Blackman wasn't exactly a stranger to cod pieces prior to taking on the Top of the Pop stage in 1986, but this did little to dilute the impact of this visual cue. Of course, it helps that the camera pretty much hones in on Blackman's nether regions as the band moves up, putting that bright red codpiece front and center. 
Elsewhere, Cameo's group choreography is on points, and this performance of Word Up is made all the better for it. <laughs> Number 16, Gladys Knight and the Pips. Sometimes the mimed performances of Top of the Pops actually work in the artist's favor. The world he left behind, not so long ago. The inimitable Gladys Knight was very pregnant when she appeared on Top of the Pops. This might have proven difficult for the singer during any other circumstances where she was expected to perform live. Here on the Top of the Pop stage, however, it's all about the song. Knight could take it easy and mime along to the playback, while the Pips did more of the heavy lifting entertainment. The performance of Midnight Train to Georgia ended up being great. Gladys Knight looked radiant and all was well. Number 15, Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden wasn't the first band to perform live on Top of the Pops, but they were one of the earliest. The studio setting just wasn't conductive to loud pop music, never mind the heavy metal bombast of Iron Maiden. The band's amps were set to minimum as a result, while Clive Burr's drum set had to be taped down, according to former Maiden guitarist Dennis Stratton. Still, this did little to dampen the immense raw power of Running Free, as evidenced by Maiden's ferocious performance. Lead singer Paul Diano is coolness personified as he rages from the front of the stage, while the band's twin guitar attack cuts through the top of the pump studio like a razor. It's pure heavy metal thunder. Number 14, Elton John. I don't have much money, but boy, if I did. Elton John's performance of Your Song was the musician's second appearance on Top of the Pops, and it's arguably his most memorable. It's very easy when discussing Top of the Pops performances to get too lost in the big and the loud. Instead, Your Song is a quiet piece, a performance that hinges upon earnestness and passion. How wonderful life is while you're Elton John isn't mugging for the camera or otherwise taking the piss. As a result, the seriousness with which your song is presented not only services Sir Elton as an artist, Yours are the sweetest eyes I've ever seen. it proves that Top of the Pops could serve as a genuinely moving avenue for new music to affect an audience. This one is just great. How wonderful life is while you're Number 13, Roxy Music. We're gonna continue on that Elton John line of thinking for a moment with our next entry. That's because it was this performance of Virginia Plain that arguably served as the means with which Roxy Music broke through into British musical conversation. <laughs> The song was their debut single, so it was this performance on Top of the Pops that could potentially make or break that single's success. Thankfully, Roxy Music more than proved up for the challenge on this night, presenting a performance that was both visually arresting and conceptually satisfying. The band's natural artistry doesn't take away from the impact of Virginia Plain as a righteous single, but instead served to amplify just how exciting Roxy Music was back in the early 70s. Number 12, Sparks. Sparks is your favorite band's favorite band. 
At least that's the reputation this idiosyncratic American duo has cultivated over the years. It's easy to see why as well, since Sparks has never done things in half measure. This includes the group's performance on Top of the Pops, a strange and surreal setup that's insanely memorable. Sparks' take on This Town Ain't Big Enough for the Both of Us leans into their quirky performance style hard and never looks back. Is keyboardist Ron Mail's choice of facial hair deliberately confrontational? Maybe, and the camera can't help but focus on his strange, almost menacing stare into the audience, who don't seem to know exactly what to do with the song. It's wild stuff. Number 11, Queen. In a pretty cabinet, let them eat cake, she says, just like Marie Antoinette. Top of the Pops was a place where both up and comers and established acts alike shared the stage. That's in part what makes the show's history so exciting. Case in point, this iconic performance from Queen back in 1974. The band had appeared on the stage before, performing Seven Seas of Rye, but this one showcases Queen in true regal form. The lighting, the atmospheric fog, Freddie Mercury's outstanding stage getup, it's all just perfect. She's a killer, Queen, gunfire, agility, dynamite with a laser beam. It's a great way to present the Queen package to a home audience, without taking away from the studio excellence of the song. Killer Queen indeed. Number 10, Spice Girls, Wannabe. We take the Spice Girls 100% seriously. No, stop laughing and hear us out. There's a sense of pride in knowing that millions of people tuned in to watch their performance of Wannabe on Top of the Pops back in 1996. Pride in how the Cool Britannia era wasn't only a success at home, but a crossover success abroad, with girl power becoming a rallying cry for pop music fans around the world. If you really bug me, then I'll say goodbye. The Spice Girls felt like certified stars as they reenacted their music video for the studio audience, while the lip syncing feels loose and fun without being overtly cheeky or dismissive. And that's no joke. If you wanna be Number 9, Blur, Country House. Speaking of Britpop, does everyone remember the back and forth between hit chart frenemies Blur and Oasis? If not, allow us to jog that memory with this Top of the Pops performance of Country House. The band's bassist, Alex James, mugs for the camera with his Oasis shirt, while the entire band seems to be at ease and confident with their pantomime. The stage is a little crowded between the band and the horn section, but the crowd hollers for more throughout, and Blair is more than willing to play into the pop hysteria. In a country, in a country. Number 8, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Relax. Relax don't there have been times when the visual and pantomime emphasis on Top of the Pops actually works as an asset to the artist in question, as opposed to a hindrance. Frankie Goes to Hollywood was one of those acts, since their appearance on the show actually did what it was supposed to do, increase their chart success. Relax had stalled a bit in the UK charts only two months prior to Frankie's gig on the show, but this performance changed everything. <laughs> The crowd is obviously into it, while the band's magnetic charisma is set fully on display, a case when seeing the artist and hearing the music finally made that all-important connection with the fans. Go! <laughs> Number 7, Culture Club. Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to hurt me? 
The landscape for out and proud LGBTQ plus performers was very different back when Culture Club took to the top of the pop stage in 1982. As a result, the band's appearances on Top of the Pops, including when they performed their hit, Do You Really Wanna Hit Me?, was, for some, their first experience seeing Boy George and company in the flesh. Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me feel like this? Do you really want to make me cry? The song's innate smoothness and laid-back reggae vibe allows George to take a visual center stage, and he absolutely made the most of his time. His stage presence is at once commanding and shy, a true rock star who nevertheless feels close enough to touch. You just can't take your eyes off him. Make me cry. Number 6. Slade Mama, we're all crazy now. Man, did Slade know how to dress or what? It's easy to see and hear how the 1980s hair metal scene was influenced by these rough and tumble glam rock hooligans, both in sound and style. Slade was truly something else, and their uniqueness was set on full display as the band leaned into their lip sync of their hit Mama We're All Crazy Now. 70s glam bands often prided themselves on looking absolutely outrageous, but Slade was on another level with their anarchic accessorizing. The music never takes back seat, however, and Mama, We're All Crazy Now offered further proof of the clever and strong sensibilities that lurked within Slade's songwriting prowess. Number 5. Tubeway Army A Friends Electric it's, it's amazing to look back and witness how ahead of the curve Gary Newman was when it came to the world of electronic music and bringing that world to the mainstream. The man's top of the pop appearance with his band Tubeway Army hit back in 1979 when punk rock was still raging. New Wave was on the horizon, and Heavy Metal was poised for commercial chart supremacy. But Newman was having none of that, instead bringing to the stage a strange, stark, and stylish visual presence that was armed with some surprisingly catchy hooks. The crowd almost doesn't seem ready to hear our friend's electric and its craftwork influenced Poptronica. By the end, he seems to have them in the palm of his hand. Number 4. Shalimar – A Night to Remember when you love someone, it's natural, not It doesn't matter whether or not you call it the backslide or the moonwalk, so long as you credit Shalimar's Jeffrey Daniel for bringing the dance move to Top of the Pops nearly a year before Michael Jackson would do so on the TV special Motown 25. Shalimar's pop R&B sound was smooth as silk, but the TOTP performance just focuses on Daniel's righteous dance moves, a pop and lock fest that may seem retro today, but was absolutely revolutionary back in 82. Daniel brings together elements of mime and breakdancing to his performance, as the song track plays in the background, and it all works brilliantly. <laughs> because who needs a band, really? Number 3. Lennon slash Ono with the Plastic Ono Band Instant Karma This is karma's gonna get you Gonna knock you right on the head Part performance, part performance arts, and just a wee bit strange. This sort of describes the vibe of John Lennon and Yoko Ono's Top of the Pops rendition of Instant Karma, alongside the Plastic Ono Band. Lennon's facial expression and body language appears coiled, tense, and aggressive, while Yoko's blindfolded sign routine feels indebted to Bob Dylan's subterranean homesick blues, only twice as distracting. Meanwhile, the mini-skirted mob dances about, oblivious to the performance's more artistic leanings, in deference to a little shaking of the moneymaker. 
does that all fit together? No, not at all, but that's exactly what makes the performance so compelling. Where we are. Number two, Kate Bush, Withering Heights. Out on the winding, windy moors, sweet roll and fall in green. It doesn't matter whether you prefer the black dress version or the white dress version of Kate Bush's Top of the Pops appearance from 1978, you win every single time. Kate was barely 20 when she decided to sing her hit, Wuthering Heights, live to a backing track for TOTP, but her inimitable presence is already set fully on display. Said simply, there's no one quite like Kate Bush. From her eccentric, interpretive dance moves, ethereal beauty, an absolutely massive voice, she's one of a kind, and these Top of the Pops performances solidify these notions in magical fashion. It's amazing to think that at this point, Bush's career was just getting started. So Number 1. David Bowie and the Spiders from Mars Starman Didn't know what time it was, the lights were low, oh, oh. Ease, Grace, Outer Space David Bowie's performance of Starman for Top of the Pops was something special. A moment that changed the lives of so many kids back in 1972. There's a star. Kids who almost immediately went out and formed bands of their own, inspired by Bowie's androgynous psychedelic form of interstellar rock and roll. The interactions between guitarist Mick Ronson and Bowie are fun to watch, as is the almost hypnotic sway of the dancing crowd. It's a communal celebration of sorts, this idea that something special was occurring in that specific studio at that specific moment. Ultimately, however, it also proved one thing, that this was Bowie's world and we were just visiting. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.